Hello my soccer universe, let's review all the Premier League action from the midweek, which I have to say was quite the interesting round, many interesting results in there and it all culminated in Liverpool beating Spurs to claim top spot, which of course is the biggest headline coming out of it, also with a little bit Mourinho Klopp. I don't think, I don't want to, we'll talk about it, but I don't want to pay too much attention to it. But we also have other headlines with West Brom getting probably the most impressive win with a 1-1 at City. City dropping again points, finally. Dropping also behind here in my projections, as, as we'll see, and the manager still get it, getting sacked. We are having uh, also United coming back again from a goal down and Chelsea losing late to Wolves. So yeah, those I think are the main points to take away from the round. I am of course wearing the Liverpool shirt from last season. I have to say it's becoming one of my favorite jerseys uh, in my collection. I like it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Let's go to the results and talk about the games. I saw mostly highlights. I saw the ending of Liverpool Spurs live, but I was watching Serie A. I decided, yeah, the top matches in the Premier League have been really disappointing to me as of late. I knew that this will mean that this will be an awesome match. I knew it was from what I hear. But I don't necessarily regret the decision because I could at least watch highlights and, you know, hear a lot of things about it in the meanwhile. So I think I'm well caught up on what happened in the Premier League. It started on Tuesday evening at the Molyneux where Wolves and Chelsea played out a game where Chelsea maybe had more but very unconvincing. They still took a lead right after the half through Giroud. Um, but with, you know, Wolves launched a few attacks and whenever they did, it counted uh, a lot and Podence gave them an equalizer in 66th and then I think Chelsea made a crucial mistake by trying, they didn't have, have, have a good day in, in a way and they still tried to get the win, pushed for it and they were counter the counter uh, and Neto can pull it in in the 95th minute which really 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 hurts. I think Chelsea probably should have said let's get a point and let's get out of here. Uh, so Similar but not quite uh, Man City to uh, against West Brom. I mean, Man City, they don't score goals at the moment. I mean, they are so lagging behind their usual goal scoring rate that uh, it really hurts. And when you see Manchester City, and that's why I don't like to report on them when they, you know, beat up a small opponent by many goals or even in other games because they are boring. <laughs> They are really boring. They have possession. Yes, they have one of my favorite players in Kevin De Bruyne. But other than that, they're boring to watch and there's not much happening. And uh, that's exactly what undid them. Yes, they took the lead through Gunduan, uh, another uh, assist by Sterling, which is probably the other player that I really like on the Manchester City squad. Um, but West Brom had a good defensive tactic and they get an own goal because uh, a shot is deflected by Ruben Dias very badly. It's 1-1 and West Brom hangs on. Yes, De Bruyne takes shots and tries to get a goal, but the goal scoring is not his forte. What can I say? Uh, it only ends 1-1, which definitely feels more like a loss for Man City and something won for West Brom. Still, Slavon Bilic got fired afterwards. And after that, I have to say, I really wish that West Brom goes down. I don't know why always these reactions, yeah, we have to fire the coach when something's not going right. You just got promoted. Of course, you're going to be struggling and your position is not all that, that, that bad. So yeah, I actually, at the moment, I know Sam Allardyce is coming in, who is to keep uh, your team in the Prem, Premier League manager. But to be honest, I have to say, I'm West, West Brom lost a lot of credit from me in that one. Uh, Arsenal, Southampton. Yes, Arsenal gets a point and probably feels uh, not bad about that to kind of stop this negative series. Theo Walcott, of all people, gives Southampton the lead. Southampton probably was uh, pushing more, was closer to the win. But, you know, uh, Obama Young gets an equal in 50 seconds and then Arsenal again. Gabriel getting two yellow cards within four minutes. This cannot happen. 
you cannot get that many red cards and this is always trouble. I mean, late on, our Arsenal had, a, I think, the hit, hit, hit it, Wood, Woodwork to Kulkul have won it late, but all over it was Southampton, that was the better, better team, but they were also happy and content with the draw. The most goals were scored between Leeds and Newcastle. Newcastle took to the lead, Bamford gets the equalizer. Then a really great uh, play. Uh, Rodrigo takes a ball in midfield, plays it out to Harrison, who holds it back, and then with a diving hand, Rodrigo puts it into the net. Uh, that would have been a worthy goal for, for the winner, but uh, Clark gets the equalizer, but uh, Leeds in the last 15 minutes add three more through Dallas, Aloski and Harrison. Oh, quite some nice goals and most of them are Cal I, I was mostly impressed by the fourth goal, I think it was by Alioski. Uh, when suddenly, I think four again against two, there was a corner um, or, or, or the action was in the lead side. I think, I think it was a corner and then Cal Cunter again. Suddenly, four Leeds players have more stamina than whatever the Newcastle players seemingly have. You can see this squad is super, super, super fit and that will play a huge part. Everton gets a 2-0 win over Leicester, who I think they were just a little bit more convincing uh, than Leicester on the day they converted chances. I have to say, I did not like a jersey matchup there. I thought Everton should have played in yellow and probably with white pants or whatever. I know they're not playing yellow because they're the blue pants, but I have had to say this green-gray combo uh, against the blue did not look all that great. But yeah, uh, Ever Everton, second win in a row, maybe Everton comes back. Full and bright, nil nil, let's lose not much uh, words on that. But Liverpool Spurs has a whole lot to talk. First half, mostly Liverpool, all Liverpool. I mean, uh, over the entire, entire game, uh, Liverpool had s around 70% of the ball and Spurs 30% of the ball. And uh, really, both teams playing the way they like it best. A total clash of styles with Liverpool, you know, expansive. Attacking, have, having the ball and taking the uh, game to the opposition and uh, Tottenham very Mourinho like holding back and launching sharp counter attacks and it almost worked for Spurs uh, yes Salah gives Liverpool uh, at that point surely deserved lead with it was a deflection and out of nowhere Lo Celso from the touch uh, from the midway line plays a ball into Son who uh, can equalize in the third third third, third and that that point it was probably a little flattering for Spurs. However, in the second half Spurs come out attacking and having great chances, uh, namely two, uh, two through Wijnaldum, one hit the post. Yes, Mane a little bit later also from acute angle hit the bar, but that uh, Wijnaldum chance Honestly, you gotta bury that. Well, and this is what costs uh, Spurs in 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 the end because uh, when the game got a little bit later and later and later on, you could see Spurs hanging back. Yeah, let's get the let's take the point home. Fortunately, all the world seemingly slips or loses track of Firmino, and he, after Robertson Cross, has a very free header to make it two one for Liverpool. Where you yeah, know. I would think that people that are watching the game neutral and saw how much possession Liverpool had, I can see that they would say that Liverpool probably deserved the win. Uh, but I think Tottenham's uh, tactic of hanging deep and larger car contacts is very, very in intriguing if you get a little bit in in into nitty gritty. And I even understand Mourinho's point when he went after the game to Klopp, uh, the better team lost today because Klopp was kind of, what? Can you say that again? Really? Really? It was kind of a fun, fun, fun exchange. I mean, you can see that the two have some respect to each other, but they also like, you know, be competitive with their. So a lot was made from this exchange. I have to say, I don't find it all that bad overall. Uh, and yeah, what, what can I say? Uh, I understand where Mourinho is coming from. Of course, I see the club uh, who saw we had most of the, of, of the ball. We pushed you back that he will think that they are the better team. And uh, I think Liverpool was probably lucky to get that win overall. So, yeah, uh, it was a big clash. I think despite the loss, it confirmed that Spurs is for real. And let's see where this goes from here, whether Liverpool, as we will see, they are now top of the table with some distance finally bet uh, between some of them. So far, it was always close on the top. Christ West Ham Crystal Palace is not too much to talk about, uh, except uh, Sebastian Alea scored a wonderful overhead kick. Really spectacular goal. Uh, bravo. That needs to be mentioned, yeah, otherwise 1-1 draw. 
uh, between two London teams that, yeah, uh, basically I think confirms how good both of them were. West Ham is having slightly the better season there. That's why they are right here. Um, Aston Villa Burnley, nil nil. Just sometimes I know Grealish is, every, is doing everything, but maybe he's trying to do too much at times. We need to talk Sheffield United against Manchester United because uh, Sheffield United scored two goals, which doesn't happen that often, McGoldrick, and also the um, uh, goalkeeper for uh, Henderson for United, who played at Sheffield United last season, got his start and the first goal was a howl from his part. Yes, he got the ball probably in an unfavorable position, but he needs to just yank it away and not try to con con control it. But fortunately, they have Rashford and Martial, who score three times between the 26th and the 51st uh, uh, to make the game safe for Manchester United. They had to then worry a little bit at the end because McGoldrick gets the second goal in the 87th, but this was mostly Manchester United um, dominating the game and probably could have even added a few more. And yeah, it does not look for Sheffield United. Uh, they are a team bound to uh, make a record with least points scored in the Premier League season. After a great last season, it's a little bit sad. So if we look at the current standings, first of all, uh, we have Liverpool now favored to win the championship, but they're still behind in percentages of making the Champions League, but you know, both are well over 90%. So that's, we have to switch. And then uh, with Chelsea losing, we have now Manchester United actually also getting into the top three, just ahead of Spurs and Chelsea then. So it's very, very interesting, very tight up top. Um, in, many, in many ways, I think that the 40 and 39% for the top two in England is probably a little bit too optimistic for my model. That's at least how I feel it. But on the, on the other side, we know that these squads are the most talented, most valuable squads. So, of course, they are uh, given... Uh, more weight in the simulation there. Uh, Chelsea now only dropping to seventh uh, and City only at ninth. I mean, I still can, 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 can't believe, but it's the game in hand uh, that, that they would have only have a five point dif difference. And, you know, the, I saw the rating for Man City is kind of still high based on the um, depth of the, of the squad. Uh, lots of changes also midfield, but if you just look at the table, how I think arguably Newcastle, Arsenal is, the, is a team that's dropping off a little bit um, from from table, but I think you could argue from Southampton to Newcastle, they are only six points. It's very, 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 very tight together. It's just, uh, yeah, Spurs to Newcastle. It's just that Liverpool has now the three-point lead, which is, we know the three points is not enough. Also, we have unevenness in the Villa of having two games less played. We have um, United and City having a game less and so on. So we need to, of course, adjust. And if we do that, we see already United is in third place, which given how they play and they are much maligned, but they still hang on to the, uh, they have a still a good, good season. They keep winning from coming behind. They keep getting their results. Yes, they got totally destroyed by Spurs, but so did Liverpool um, against Aston Villa. So that I think it was just in the crazy beginning of the season. So I'm really curious where this will lead with Manchester United because at the moment I have the feeling they're a little bit like Inter Italy. Not that they will challenge like Inter, but uh, that they are getting their results in the league while in Europe they're not all that great. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, it, it also means that Chelsea drops actually quite low. Um, I will say that the deepest squad in all <laughs> in all leagues is Chelsea, but um, seemingly not racking up the results yet. I think if Chelsea would get on a roll, they could mount the challenge, but I still would give it at the moment to Liverpool, because Liverpool have so many injuries out, and they still look like the strongest team in England. Overall, yes, they were a little bit luck, luck against Spurs, but I, they have a certain resilience in them, that I would actually think Liverpool might win it again. Um, on the weekend, we get to see Liverpool quite early. They again travel to London, uh, first Fulham last week, now Crystal Palace. Uh, Everton Arsenal, sounds interesting. Uh, both of them with kind of different stories. I think Spurs Leicester is one big matchup that needs to be watched. United against Leeds United, that should be a fun game. 
But yeah, I, I don't know what to make of United. And I, oh, I, I overlooked the sleeper matchup Southampton against Manchester City. Actually, I'm very tempted to watch that one. So yeah, that was the Premier League from uh, the midweek action. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below if you think there's anything that I forgot or that you want to add uh, to what happened. And yeah, I will be talking to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!